you have the West that is essentially saying the quiet part out loud because this Ukrainian counteroffensive has been a tragedy. <laughs> like you have yeah. forty five thousand plus Ukrainians that died in the last few weeks. Yeah, uh, and you have this counteroffensive that Ukraine was essentially pressured into. <laughs> Because like, we covered this before, how the because in order to justify increased spending on the Ukraine war, there had to be gains that were are being shown. You had protests in Germany and France. You had the American populists who switch on Ukraine funding dramatically compared to last year. So Ukraine needed something to show in order to justify more funding. So they say in the media, you had BBC, you had CNN, MSNBC, New York Times writing editorials. And last year they said the Ukrainian counteroffensive is coming, and Ukraine's like, "What are you talking about?" We said <laughs> the Ukraine counteroffensive. Is- we didn't have any counteroffensive plan. We said the Ukrainian counteroffensive is coming. They're like, "Oh, God damn it! You're- All right, I guess we got to do it." So now the, the counteroffensive has gone so badly that they're pointing fingers. We show you the cartoon of Ukraine criticizing the West. For not giving them aid they need fast enough. Now they are attacking the Ukrainian foreign minister. Ukraine foreign minister responds to criticism of the counteroffensive. And to show you guys how crazy this psychopath is, his, his well, he essentially said, he like, hey, Wes, I know we a lot of us is dying. We're not getting a lot of gains. But come on, give us more time. Allow more Ukrainians to die, and we will eventually we can rush us some more. So that's what he said. He said, never underestimate Ukraine, have confidence. Have patience. Victory is hard work. So this is a Ukrainian public official that is openly selling out his people for more death to appease the West. Now I'm doing this quickly because I want to get Tara out here in time. So this is why I want this is why I'm building to right here. This came from the New York Times, where they was talking about the casualty numbers. And by the way, a lot of this article, because uh, I got an archive version of this article. Is garbage. Like they straight up lied at one point in this article. They said in, in the beginning of this article, they say that even though Russian casualties are dwarfing Ukraine, I'm like, no, it's not. What the fuck are you talking about? And in, in this article, they try and paint this picture that there's way more Russian casualties than Ukrainian, even though that's a factual lie. That's a that's a straight up lie. But even though they lie. sorry, 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 Tara, what you said? It's, no, I just said that's a straight up lie. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, not I, didn't, I, I didn't click that part, but I got. I, I may have to find it. I'm gonna show it to you guys. But in the very beginning, they said the Russian casualties are dwarfing Ukrainian, and I'm like, man, that's just so annoying. You guys are just openly lying. But look at this part. American officials say they fear that Ukraine has became be, had become casualty averse. So there's a few terms that we talk about in RBN. Like if you hear someone say um, purity test, for example, protest vote, you know they're shit lip, right? You know yeah. someone is a warmongering psychopath when you use the term <laughs> casualty averse. This is the first time I ever read that term, the first time I ever said it. No one should ever, ever use the term casualty averse. <laughs> so That is, you're absolutely right. right. That is the most ugly term. And only a neoliberal could coin it that way and make it sound clinical and make it sound logical, right? Yeah. Like casualty at first. No, yeah, they don't want to die, right? In a bloody war and a bloody conflict and keep throwing up their young men and women up into this conflict. Yeah, and, and now at this point, it's old men and children, basically. You see, and, and they're pulling, literally pulling men off the streets, forcing them in scripted. And there's plenty of videos to show that. Um, you know, and yeah. it, it's, it's really, it's, but you know, um, like I think it was a month ago, you saw a US official state that this, um, you know, was, what they're doing is also testing out, um, American and British weapons and seeing how they work. Yeah, Literally right. using human yeah. beings yeah. and hunting them. Well, and, and and Vladimir Putin put this pretty eloquently. He said, hunting them like animals. Basically, that's what's happening here. He was referring back basically to the genocide that happened in the United States and Native Americans, but it applies here. I mean, this is, it's, it's horrendous. And you have that general saying, this is the best money they ever spent. 
they're not putting Americans up, they're putting these Ukrainians up. They don't give a shit, they don't give a fuck, excuse my language, about Ukrainians. And they've said the quiet part out loud. They said, we're gonna fight to the last one. I mean, yeah. you think Ukrainians would be shuddering, they would be, and I'm sure they are, the people. They're under the regime of Zelensky and a few Ukrainian oligarchs that, by the way, are not in Ukraine, they're in Europe. One of the, one of the military, um, the people high up got caught with millions of dollars for his daughter to have a villa in Spain that was U.S. aid and it got diverted. There, there, and, and, you know, just how long ago was it? Just five years ago, Ukraine was called the most corrupt country in the world by BBC. How has that changed? How has that changed? So I want to um, look, look what they say here. They say, uh, American officials say they fear that Ukraine has become casualty averse. One reason has been cautious about pressing ahead with the counteroffensive. So they say they, so what they're saying is so crazy because it's actually a lie. <laughs> because the Ukrainian regime is not casualty averse. They've been throwing Ukrainian bodies to the point where they have forcibly constrict people from the street right. and have them die against the Russian government. Yeah. So it's one of the things where the media is. So unhinged, they criticize even more unhinged people for not being unhinged enough. It's like the same way they criticize yeah. Anthony Blinken and Joe Biden for not funding Ukraine more, even though they're like, you, you know, you see how much money we sent them? That's what they're doing here. They, even though Ukraine don't care about their civilians, um, they're like, why don't you guys have more of them sacrifice their life for us? And he said <laughs> almost any big push, and this is what he, he's explaining a concept that we talk about on the RBN all the time, where we say if you're going to have these big counteroffensive, especially against a dug-in Russian forces with mines, they're going to lead to large uh, casualties. And, they, and they're complaining that Ukraine uh, is acknowledging this. So one reason it has been cautious about pressing ahead with the counteroffensive because of casualties. Almost any big push against dug-in Russian defenders protected by minefields would result in huge numbers of losses. Yes, that's something that, that you would want to prevent, right? Right. <laughs> and it is funny how Ukraine military deaths already surpassed the number of American troops that died nearly two decades. U.S. U.S. units were in were in Vietnam, and they also had an equal amount of Afghan security forces that died during the entire two decade Afghanistan war. So more Ukrainians died in Afghan security security forces in the Afghan war already. But the New York Times in the West is fearful. That Ukraine may pause how many Ukraine, how many casualties did they throw at this war. How sick is that? And one one last scene, I'll get you out of here, Tar. I want I'll get you out of here before I continue the first day time. But one more thing I want to read out. You may have seen this, but this, you had the New York Times admit the quiet part out loud. This is the Washington Post doing essentially the same thing, um, explaining why we care so much about the Ukrainian war. When you hear politicians talk about this and to the voters, when I heard that corporate media talk to the voters, they will say, well, this war is important because if we don't stop Russia here, they're going to continue to Europe. Like, they think we're stupid because that made no fucking sense. But this is them talking to each other. Because remember, Washington Post is subscription-based, Tara, CJ. Yeah. So when you, when, when you listen to Washington Post articles, the New York Times article, a lot of time their target audience is not us. It's the establishment talking to each other. It's so the establishment can pick up on the talking points and the cues of each other. That's what it's about. It's not about educating us. It's about them educating each other. So this right. is a rare moment of uh, clarity from the Washington Post so they can explain to their own class what this war is really about. So look, listen to this. Meanwhile, for the United States and its NATO allies, these 18 months of war have been a strategic windfall at a relatively low cost other for other than for the Ukrainians, so other than a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dead plus Ukrainians, this has been great. And then they explain how we essentially making all these gains with Ukrainians dying instead of us. So the people who claim they care about Ukraine is openly and complicit with these people who are bragging about throwing Ukrainian lives away. But let me finish here. The West's most reckless antagonist has been Rock. Talking about Russia. NATO has grown much stronger with the additions of Sweden and Finland. Germany has waned itself from dependence on Russian energy. In many ways, 
rediscovered its sense of values. <laughs> NATO squabbles made headlines, but overall, this has been a triumphal, su- triumphal summer for the Alliance. So anyway, I want to get your last thoughts on this talk. I know I appreciate you uh, giving us some time. So That's Jeremy, okay. over here, and I want yeah. to the final. And then yeah, we, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna wrap it up here, here. Yeah. I, and then and then bounce. But I, what I want to say is, is everything you were saying was quite true. Just how 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 craven this is, and how I mean how how psychopathic actually it is from these legacy newspapers but that's what they're doing i mean that's what they do that this is their job right to talk to each other like you said to stay with the narrative to give talking points to others trying to push the narrative and and that narrative is pretty grim and um you know so it's now that's why 70 percent of americans don't trust the media the media openly admitting they don't care about me ukrainians die in order for them to accomplish their geopolitical goals. Meanwhile, the NATO left, the people like Matt Duss and, and these morons, they believe they're the pro-Ukrainian side, even though they're funding the Ukrainian government. Corruption that leads to more Ukrainians dying. Marianne Williamson believed that she support Ukrainians with her unhinged position, were uh, uh, pushing on with, with the Ukraine counteroffensive in war because you don't want Russia to be in a strong position for negotiation. They don't want Putin to get a win, so they are willing to sacrifice the entire generation of Ukrainians. And I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, uh, the reason why liberals and a lot of progressives, like the Russia Gate, uh, Trump derangement syndrome, adult minded progressives like Bernie Sanders, the reason why they support the NATO war is essentially because of Russia Gate. This was manufactured through Russia Gate through years, the hatred and xenophobic views of the Russian people. Right. But anyway, let me quickly cover this. I don't want to cover this too long. I may, I may cover this again when I have more time to break it down. I don't want to bring this up in conf- uh, the context of, of our conversation. CJ, do you remember when we explained the concept on how it was always the better position to advocate for peace as soon as possible? Lula called for peace early on. The response that Matt does and the, left, and the NATO left had was that you can't negotiate with Putin and Russia as they seize Ukrainian lands. Ukraine must take the land back before you negotiate because you don't want to embolden that kind of imperial aggression. That's their argument, right? But the argument that we made at the time is that this is the best time for you guys to negotiate. In the beginning of the war, Russia would just... They wasn't even asking for Zelensky to to step down. They wasn't even asking for an overhaul of the Ukrainian government. They was asking for the independence of the Donbass, Odessa, and the demilitarization of the Azov Battalion and Nazis in Ukraine. Now, after maybe after like the first six months, there was a quote around last October, November, where Putin said, yeah, the Zelensky regime has to go. We wasn't calling for that at first, but after seeing how they complicitly sold their people out, uh, sold uh, Ukrainian values up to NATO, they got to they gotta go. So the longer that Ukraine waged war against Russia and the war, more land that they continue to lose, the worse the negotiation part they will be at. So you had General Miley that before the counteroffensive, and that's some of this stuff, I may cover this in a longer segment, just for the sake of time later, but Miley was heavily criticized by Morning Joe. And I don't know if you remember, this was a long time ago. Like, I didn't see it. I don't think I saw that. Go, go ahead. He said that we need to negotiate uh, before Ukraine is in a worse position that he is now, that they are in now. And he was called a Putin appeaser. Uh, people w- was calling that an unacceptable position. Now in Politico, they're writing stories where they have to acknowledge that Miley had a point because now they acknowledge. That the counter shifted counter offensive has been a failure. So I should read the beginning. I co- I may cover this more in detail at Nick at night. But the conversation, and this is from the beginning, the conversation about Ukraine's counter offensive has shifted from one of excitement to disappointment as Kiev's slow gains lead some U.S. Ofis- officials and insiders alike to whisper, whisper: Should we have listened to General Mark Miley in November? The Joint Chiefs Chair said, you, said Ukraine's strong military position in the upcoming winter season combined to make a good time to consider peace talks. And we covered this at the, at the time as well, when we like, yes, 
What are you going to do? This is the best time for you guys to possibly negotiate. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Go to war with them? Lose more people? Lose more territory? Have the Ukrainian uh, military be depleted? Like, in a lot of ways, and you have people in the West that say Russia lost this war. The question is, how did they lose this war? Remember this question I kept asking, CJ? How is Russia losing the war? So remember, Putin said his goal was to denazify Ukraine. A lot of the, the chief leaders of the Azov Battalion, many Azov Nazi generals are dead, fam. Mm. The Azov numbers have been depleted. They're not all gone because Ukraine is infested with Nazis, but there have been so many examples of high-profile generals of the Azov regime, violent, influential Nazis that was purged by the Russian military. And I don't know how you feel, CJ, but to me, that's nothing but a good thing as a, as a communist. All good. All good. <laughs> it's a great thing that Russia accomplished the goal of denazifying Ukraine, right? So now U Ukraine's in shambles. So like this guy who's not even then Mark Milley is not a radical, be not an anti-imperialist. He is just objectively explaining the situation. He said, if we went to after the winter, and we went to Ukraine and weekend, and we lose more land and the counteroffensive fell, we will be in a weaker negotiating position. And that is exactly what happened. And that is what the political article is forced to admit. And he's, and I'm going to continue here. Um, plus operations to expel Russian forces out of the whole of Ukraine, which Zelensky demands, had a slim chance of success. So after he said that, administration officials scrambled to assure their counterparts in Kiev that Miley was just riffing. See, he was bullshitting. He was just he, he didn't actually mean it. He was not reflecting the sentiment of the White House. He was just talking shit. So Miley said that he was immediately overturned. He was immediately smeared for it. So now listen to this part. But listen to Miley lately, and you can hear the implicit, I told you so. See, do you guys know how big of a deal it is that political is forced to acknowledge it, CJ? We're reaching the end, fam. <laughs> like, this shit is over. Like, this counteroffensive was such a disaster. And I'm cutting my segment short because I have another propaganda report I'm going to show. But I, might, I will say that for later. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah, I wonder, I wonder I I wonder. some of the stuff you're cutting out. You cut Because I know in the Washington Post they had some stuff they admitted to. Maybe it was late last week they admitted to. <laughs> uh, like, this offensive is not going bad. Like, you, you, you yeah. hear it, like, kind of, like, in drips and drops. Like, just here and there, they're releasing information. And I think that's how they're – that's how – that's the strategy also. It's because what are they going to do? All of them come on. Hey, guys, okay, this this is bullshit all along. You know what I mean? They got to kind of yeah. just like a little bit at a time. They can't going to come out and be like this bullshit because it, it'll totally collapse the believability in anything they say in the future. And they want to, they got another war to sell literally right around the corner with China. 